This presentation is about digging, digging into understandings about education, about the needs of children, about educating children in a natural way, digging into the past, and digging a new pathway into the future. This is about the beginning of something called Earth School, its growth and success story. Earth School started with dreaming of a place where children could be doing something real that applied to life out in nature where academic learning, the arts, and the woods were integrated. The name Earth School came from the Native American concept that the planet is the best teacher, the outdoors is the best classroom, and learning is naturally fun. It's called digging in the dirt because we do a lot of literal getting our hands dirty, and also because we're just scratching around in the dirt here with children and families and teachers trying to figure out what works. And because in uncovering some of the dirt of what is not working in the American educational system today, I hope it can help us to find some real working solutions. So at Earth School, it all starts with getting your hands dirty, like mixing dirt with nutrients to make soil for healthy plants. It's the kind of dirt that gets under your nails and makes you feel really good about the work you just did. Teenagers from a local shelter arrive at our farm with their hoods up, sweatshirts zipped, hands in pockets, completely shut down. But within an hour of harvesting and tasting, of transplanting and weeding, of seeding and watering, they're getting dirty, smiling, laughing, they're touching worms, they're no longer afraid of the honeybees, and they're munching on fresh veggies and herbs without washing them first because this is natural dirt, and they learn to call it farm pepper. Many of the children are touching fresh running water for the first time in their lives, and they're asking me, is it safe to touch? When Earth School was created, the overriding concept was to bring children back into nature. And this was confirmed by research everywhere, like Richard Louv's Last Child in the Woods. Earth School has always been a part of the movement to eradicate nature deficit disorder, promoting education in an outdoor classroom. Because children tell me that they can think more clearly in nature. They feel calmer, more themselves, more connected, and happier. It's actually that simple. One of my students who's now 15 years old wrote about her experiences and she said, at earth school, nature and the earth became personified. Trees became alive. Rocks held stories. Animals talked. The woods were a place of wonder, peace, and magic. A place to retreat into, find quiet, and come back to myself. But today, there are middle school children in local public schools who do not get to go outdoors to play because there are too many of them, and their teachers have told me that it's unmanageable. So hundreds of teenagers spend their recesses indoors in the cafeteria. How is this possible? In part, it has to do with the origins of compulsory public schooling in America when schools were intentionally designed to train children for an industrial future. It was said in 1906 that schools should be factories in which raw products, children, are to be shaped and formed into finished products, manufactured like nails. The U.S. Commissioner of Education at that time stated that the great purpose of school can be realized better in dark, airless, ugly places. The purpose of Earth School is to provide the opposite, to promote and nurture the diversity of the individual rather than monocropping children to bring them out into the fresh air for hard work and community service, and to study nature and to learn about themselves. Over time, Earth School has evolved into a farm-based education program with a focus on sustainable living practices. It has become a blend of academics with ethics, merged with environmental awareness, promoting organic agriculture and green technology for all children of all ages and backgrounds. We caught the wave of farm-based education, but anyone can give a farm tour. At Earth School, we know that lasting educational impact comes with real experiential learning. To get the thrill of eating a fresh strawberry, you've got to pick it right from the patch and pop it in your mouth without washing it. To understand soil and compost, you have to get your hands in it. To know why worms are heroes, you have to pick them up. You have to giggle at the tickle of a horse's slobbery lips in your palm as you feed it a carrot in order to overcome a fear of large animals. You gotta slosh through the stream while learning about the water cycle or slip in the wetland pond while studying frogs. These are experiences that teach because all of the senses are involved. 
a powerful educational experience is an impactful one. Our students care for free-ranging chickens, including roosters and hens who hatch their own eggs, so they experience the whole life cycle of a chicken, not only the indoor science experiment of an incubator. They learn the truth of the saying, what matters is not what you eat, what matters is what what you eat ate. And they attend year-round health and nutrition workshops, harvesting and cooking the veggies they planted from seeds in our gardens, and helping them to learn how to make healthy choices and why to eat slow food. Our students ride a seesaw that pumps water from our wetland pond, and a bicycle that blends organic smoothies from local seasonal fruits. They have a tire swing and a green roof and a low wind generator, so they can fully understand alternative energy systems. They tap the sugar maple trees and taste the miracle of fresh, sweet sap. They have daily farm chores and community service projects so they can develop into caring world citizens with a global consciousness. Our motto is small steps towards a big difference because it is inside of this idea of community, of volunteering, of every little bit helping that success happens. Earth School starts with the belief that any start is a good one, and that child-sized gardens make the most sense because children can easily plant, maintain, and forage inside of them. And because the basic premise of permaculture is that small is sustainable, and because connecting to nature happens one-on-one. When children experience with all of their senses how animals and insects work in partnership with the land, they develop respect for the whole living system of the planet, for the interconnectedness of all things, It's more than just making healthy eating choices. It's about choosing ways to live sustainably so that safe food and water will be a part of our future. Earth School is about transformation. One backyard at a time, one young grassroots activist at a time.